Now, no religion is the new religion, at least according to researchers at Lancaster University. They found that a majority of white British people identify as non-religious, and that number is rising with each generation. The research suggests 46% of the whole British adult population identify as having no religion. That's up from 37% in 2013. Of those that aren't religious, 13% said they hold specifically anti-religious views. But 42% of adults said they do still consider themselves to be Christian. So is Britain losing its religion? Joining me now to discuss, Andrew Marsh, Campaigns Director at Christian Concern, a Conservative Evangelical lobbying group which says the UK has turned its back on Jesus and should return to the Christian faith. Also joining us, Keith Porteous Wood from the National Secular Society. Thanks both of you very much for joining us this morning. Andrew Marsh, to you first. Why do you think fewer people than ever are now identifying themselves as Christian in the UK? Well, I think this uh, survey does paint an interesting picture of very changing times. Uh, what's one of the things that's interesting is that it isn't that uh, people are uh, becoming necessarily more secular. Uh, interesting in those survey figures that uh, only around 3%, I think, of people uh, would describe themselves as humanist or secularist. And even amongst those who would describe themselves as non-religious, uh, actually a, only a minority would describe themselves as atheist. And we put that alongside... Uh, other studies that show that uh, churches who are serious about presenting the uh, historic person of Jesus in line with the Bible's uh, teaching, uh, who are serious about reaching out to their communities, serving, but also showing how Jesus continues to be relevant, uh, not only to the big questions of life, but also to the everyday questions of life, uh, in very many parts of the country are growing. Uh, so I think that uh, as we look at this survey, we may think that actually, particularly for a younger generation, it's not so much that uh, Christianity has been tried and found wanting, it's that it's never been tried, or perhaps even that it's never really been given a hearing because Christianity is being pushed out of schools, and in the last decade or two, we've had some very aggressive and unfounded attacks, misrepresentative attacks, on what the Christian message is. So people may have a very skewed understanding of what Christianity is and who Jesus is. Uh, Keith Porteous Wood from the National Secular Society. I mean, what do you say to, to that? Uh, people may not be Christian, but they're not necessarily secular either, are they? They just don't quite know. They haven't quite nailed their colours to masks, but they, they perhaps wouldn't describe themselves as being secular. Well, there's a big misnomer here. Uh, secularism isn't about being religious or not being religious. You can be religious and be secular. Secularism is about a level playing field that everybody should be equally... Uh, able to participate in society without discrimination by, based on their religion or lack of it. But the problem that we have is that this is uh, a continuation of a decline in active Christianity that's been going on for at least th since the Second World War and arguably for a century. And yes, our institutions just haven't ca caught up. We have a third of our schools uh, which are Christian schools and are able to discriminate, all of them, against yeah. teachers who aren't of the religion and in admissions in many of the schools also against children who aren't uh, Christian. And I think that's totally inappropriate uh, now. Similarly, in Parliament, we have uh, what the Archbishop of Canterbury has just described as the most con conservative bench of bishops... Uh, since World War II. Now, they have voted, every one of them, against same-sex marriage, uh, and, and also uh, they uh, on, on assisted dying. And the, this just shows how terribly out of touch they are with the rest of society, and in many cases, a lot of other more liberal Christians. Okay. Uh, and we're being badly served by these institutions. OK, so, so Keith Porter would too much religion in society for you, not enough for you, Andrew Marsh. Uh, what difference would it make, do you think, Andrew Marsh, if Britain was more religious? What are the benefits of a religious society? Well, I think, I mean, Keith mentioned their uh, church, Christian schools uh, over uh, the, the numbers that he gave there. And it's striking that uh, Christian schools continue to be very popular with uh, parents and with children. And that's in part because of the ethos and the values that they give. And those values and ethos uh, for Christian schools flow from the person of Jesus Christ. But in, it, with, I mean, with respect, you know, certainly around my way, 
the, the thing with the religious schools is that they get better grades. Parents suddenly discover a great interest in the church for the few years before their children need to get into school, and they, they tend to stop going once the children are in there. Well, I think that uh, we need to explore why it is that uh, perhaps they do produce better grades and whether it is that, uh, uh, as I would expect, that a Christian ethos gives a fuller understanding of who we are as humans and who children are, that uh, beyond just mere academic achievements, but because we're created in the image of God, all are worthy of respect and dignity. And if we contrast that with, for example, an atheistic framework, if the universe is ultimately impersonal and we're lonely and locked up in a, in a universe that, uh, where we're alone, uh, that is a cold universe that uh, creates a society that is increasingly cruel and competitive, and perhaps we can identify with that as we look at our society. Whereas if the reality as it is that there is a personal creator God, then relationships is at the heart of reality. And it's no surprise that the things that actually most of us would hold dearest and see as most precious and most real are relationships, because we are created by a relational God to be in relationship with him. OK, well let's, the... put that, well, let's put those points to Keith Forty's word. I mean, Keith, do you think then if we were more religious, we'd have a better education for our children? Is that a route that we should be looking going down in the UK? Well, the studies show clearly that the decline in religiosity hasn't been matched by decline uh, in morality or ethics. Uh, so uh, I, I think that, in fact, in many ways, it's become a more hum humane society. And as far as the schools are concerned, yes, indeed. I mean, there are some Christian schools that are actually in the, uh, in the bottom class of uh, needing improvement and, uh, and failing. Um, but uh, on, on average, they, they are better, and they're better because they're able to select in a way the poor old community schools d can't do. They can uh, decide who they want to have, and in a sense, many of these uh, Christian schools are actually segregated by class, and, the, and the, the surveys show quite clearly that they have a higher socioeconomic uh, class of people in them than is represented by the, the area immediately around the school. So it's actually a, a very, very unfair system, and I think we should uh, stop any kind of discrimination on grounds of religion for publicly funded schools. Let's not forget that every penny of the running costs of these schools are paid by the, the population as a whole, and it's wrong that there should be this Christian privilege. Andrew Marsh, it's part of the problem that, that for young people, a lot of young people now look at the world, they look at war, they look at the, the news we're reporting today from Iraq about the number of people who are being held by ISIL. And for them, religion equals war. And, and, and perhaps 100 years ago, 200 years ago, religion was something at the heart of society. It, it's, it's had bad press, hasn't it, in the last few years, religion? What are you going to do to turn that around? Absolutely. I think it has had bad press and a very aggressive attack from a small quarter of society in suggesting that uh, religion is bad and non-religion somehow doesn't create these kind of problems, which I just don't think stacks up from the historical evidence. I think this is a real wake-up call for churches, for the church, and the challenge you identify that actually I think many young people are not really familiar, have got a skewed impression of what the Christian message is. Many people assume that the Christian message is purely a is simply a moral code. Don't do this, do do this, try and be virtuous, try harder. When the reality is that at the heart of the Christian message is the good news of a personal loving God who loved the world so much that in the person of Jesus he stepped in, laid down his own life uh, to bring restoration, forgiveness, reconciliation, to deal with the biggest problems that we have and to bring hope to the world. And that contrasts with an atheistic framework in which ultimately morality, uh, meaning is illusory and death is the end. In contrast, the person of Jesus, uh, Jesus says that actually life triumphs in the end. And my experience is with young people and with students, with many young people and students, that when actually they come to face to face with the real Jesus on the pages of the Bible, they are amazed at his radical love and commitment and service and self-sacrifice and are drawn to him. So I think there is a real need for the church to get out there and to bring that message, as many are, of good news, uh, still relevant today. OK, keep Forty's word, uh, 
the, the number of young people who are becoming involved in religion or who say they're religious is falling. It is, it is the biggest group that, that, that appear to be losing their religion. But, but young people do seem to, to be looking for something elsewhere, don't they? We, we see things like mindfulness classes, yoga, spiritualism. There is still, it seems, a, a need that people are still searching for something. Do you think secularism is necessarily the answer to a lot of people's problems? Well, it's, secularism is about creating e equality. As, uh, I mean, the National Secular Society is for freedom of of religion and, and people can effectively believe whatever they like provided it doesn't adversely impinge on other people as it, I have to say the growing religious extremism that we're w w witnessing does do um, but uh, it's very strange that, uh, uh, that young people are abandoning uh, the church at an accelerating rate in the face of what is unquestionably a much greater evangelism in Christian schools, and I actually wonder whether that might not even be a causal effect. Um, finally, Andrew Marsh, I mean, the, the, the problem is as well, when we talk about the, the young people, if you're not brought up with religion, it seems that you are likely to retain that lack of religion. Not only 90% 90, 90 of people who don't have religion stay as having no religion all their lives, but of the people who are brought up religious, 40% lose it. It does seem that the trajectory for religion generally, not just Christianity, on the whole in the UK, is, is really falling, isn't it? Well, as I say, uh, as mentioned earlier, I think that we do have to look be up beneath and dig down into the statistics a bit because there are, uh, there's a headline figure, but uh, there are different stories, uh, for example, with churches that uh, are committed to serving their community and sticking with the historic Jesus, but showing how he's relevant to not only life's continuing big questions, as you alluded to a moment ago, but also everyday questions. But there is a great challenge uh, for churches. Uh, the society has changed quite significantly. New technologies, uh, the internet, social media, etc., uh, video, new opportunities, I think, and Christians and churches need to be at the forefront of engaging with those, using those media uh, to bring what continues to be a message of good news and of contemporary relevance. Well, we did ask you for your views. Uh, quite a few of you got in touch. Uh, Janet Giorgio, uh, most in the UK, she says, have never experienced war, hunger or oppression. Uh, faith can't compete with misplaced certainty. Uh, and a contrary view, Diane Cooper, you don't have to, have, you don't have to go to church to have faith. Just a couple of views we've had into us here this morning on Sky News. Uh, Andrew Marsh uh, and Keith Porteous-Wood, thank you both very much for joining us to discuss faith in Britain.